Okay, so a brand new DaVinci Resolve color grading tutorial. I'm gonna show you how to get that vintage retro film look. I don't really know how I should call it actually, because it's not like it's a film stock emulation of a specific film stock. I just wanna show you how to get a general retro film vibe. I know it's a lot of buzzwords, but you know what I mean, right? And as usual, you can use the techniques and tools that I'm gonna show you to create this look or your own customized look. That's something I always encourage you to do. Don't just blindly follow what I do. Maybe push a slider to the left instead of to the right and see what happens. Maybe it looks a lot better than what I did, you know? But anyway, first, before we start, a few important things you should know to get the most out of this retro color grade. First of all, if you want to get the same look as what you saw in the intro, you need the sun. Because light is always where it starts if you want to get a specific look. Light will decide what your end result will look like. And all the footage that I used was shot on very sunny days in the afternoon or at sunset. But for example, footage shot in a subway with a lot of fluorescent lights will also look amazing if you give it this film look treatment. It will just look different, so keep that in mind. Okay, and then number two, something I didn't do actually, but if you can, if your camera supports it, use 10-bit footage, because this film look requires a lot of effects and you're gonna push your footage to the limit sometimes. And 10-bit footage will be able to handle all that a lot better. But don't worry if your camera doesn't support 10-bit, because it is possible to do it with normal 8-bit footage. Everything you saw in the intro was 8-bit footage. You just have to be a bit more careful not to push it over the limit, you know? Now, the color grading is just a small part of the look. Always remember that. So if you wanna take it to the next level, make sure that you also use the right kind of titles and effects. This obviously doesn't look as good or retro vintage as this. And same with the transition effects and frames. I use motion VFX titles and effects, link is in the description, but just do a Google search and you'll find something you like, 100%. Maybe even for free. And then number four, music and sound effects. I can't stress it enough how important it is if you're going for a specific look. And you know, it almost took me two hours to find just the perfect music track for that 15 second intro. Not because Audio, the sponsor of this video, has a shitty website. Wait, that's not a great way to start a sponsored segment. Wait, so no, they have a great website. They really do. Everything's easy to find because on top of all the classic filters like mood and theme, there's also some very specific filters like build and duration. But the problem is that they're offering so many great tracks and as soon as you download one, you'll find another one and another one and another one. And before you know it, it's two hours later and you get the picture. So yeah, right now they're offering their pro license, music and sound effects, unlimited downloads that you can use forever for YouTube, social media, TV, and even client work for just 59 bucks for the first year. That's 70% off. So go check them out. The link and the code is in the description. And thank you Audio for sponsoring this video and for not having a shitty website. I really wonder if they're gonna approve this segment. We'll see. Um. <laughs> anyway, let's just start color grading, yeah? So, the first thing we need to do is a conversion, because this is log footage and it looks flat and desaturated. If you're already confused now, I'll link a few videos in the description in which I explain this more in detail. If you're not using log footage, so if you're using a standard profile on your camera and your footage already looks normal and not flat and desaturated, you can just skip this step. So let's drop a color space transform on this node here. The color space for this footage is sgamma3.cine and the gamma is slog3. Then add another color space transform and set the output gamma to cine on film log because we're gonna use one of DaVinci Resolve's built-in film stock LUTs. And you'll see in a bit why I use a separate node for that. Again, I'll put some links in the description if you want more in detail explanations. Then add another node for the LUT. So go to LUTs and look for the film looks. And then you can use any of these here, the Rec. 709 LUTs, not the DCI P3 ones. I'm gonna use this one, the, the warmer version, but you can use whatever, of course. Drop it onto the node and then select both the LUT node and the Cineon node. Right click and create compound node. And now, if you want to, you can tone down the film look right here. Go to key and then key output. 
See? And if you don't do it like this, if you don't create a compound node, it won't work. Okay, and then next let's add two nodes at the beginning of the node tree for basic corrections. One for exposure and one for color correction. And the first thing I want to do in the exposure node is bring down the exposure because it's a bit too bright. Let's use the curves, pull down the midtones here, maybe also the highlights, they're way too bright. You can also use the color wheels of course, it doesn't matter. And then in the color correction node, I'm gonna do a few things to get that gritty retro look. First of all, I want it even warmer. So let's push the temperature and let's also push the tint a bit towards green. A lot of times the highlights in film are a bit greenishy yellow, you know? I don't know, I like it. Now, how much? That of course depends on what your footage looks like. Like I said, I'm not going for a specific film stock or anything here. It's just what I feel looks good. And tomorrow I might feel different about it, you know? And to get a proper film look, I'm also gonna push the highlights here towards that yellow and green. Something... something in between yellow and green. Something like that, yeah. And then here you can use the range up or down to dial in the amount. How much of the highlights will get that yellowishy green tint. You see? I'm gonna go for something like this. And you can always go back to these two nodes and make more adjustments, no problem. Okay, that looks really good already, but we're not there yet. Now let's work on the film look. We're gonna use some of Resolve's built-in effects and you'll see, it's not difficult, it's, it's easy. So let's put these nodes here and then the color space transforms down here at the end. And now let's add four nodes in between. The first node will be the blur node because we want to get rid of that digital sharpness. So look for the Gaussian blur here in effects, drop it onto the node and, well yeah, just set it to something you like. Not too high, of course. You still want to see some detail. It also depends on the footage, if it's 1080 or 4K. Something like this, I guess, looks good. And that's it. Then next is the halation, 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 I have no idea how to pronounce it. This, this word here, that node. And I switched to another clip here because it's easier to show you what that halation exactly is. So drop the effect on the node. And the only settings I'm gonna adjust here are the threshold, film saturation level and strength. And it's all about that glowy blooming effect around the highlights. And also that reddish glow here on the edge of the tree. You see where the highlights seem to bleed into the tree? That's a characteristic of a lot of film stocks. And it's just a matter of adjusting those three settings until it looks good. It really depends on your footage and what the light looks like in your footage. Sometimes it looks better to increase the film saturation, but sometimes I also put it all the way down because it looks overly saturated. So just play around with it. I think I'm gonna go for something like this, yes. Okay, and then the next node, a glow node to, well, yeah, to make it more glowy and a bit softer even. It will also affect the shadows a bit, so glow effect onto the node, the shine threshold all the way down. Then set the composite type to soft light. And then I'm gonna give a color to the glow, here. See how it changes the look of your image? It's really cool. I'm gonna go for something like teal, but not too strong, something like that. And then bring the global blend down to, well, yeah, I think this looks good. And see, it gives you that vintagey look. Then something I also did, but this is optional. Sometimes it looks nice, sometimes it's too much. I added some film damage. It's also an effect. And here you can also adjust blur and temperature and some other things, but we already did that in the other nodes. So let's set everything to zero here. Also disable scratches because that's just too much for me. And then play around a bit with the dirt settings. Don't overdo it, don't make the dirt too big. I guess something like this, you know, barely visible, but it adds that little bit of texture. And then the final step is film grain, all the way at the end of the node tree, because I don't want any of the other nodes to affect the grain. The grain is a separate thing that comes on top, you know? 
So look for the grain effect, drop it onto the node, and well, yeah, let's just use a preset here. Let's keep it simple. 16 millimeter, sure. Increase the opacity, there. I mean, you can make it look however you want. Make it stronger, no problem. And that's it. That's how you create a vintage retro film look vibe however you want to call it. And like I said, guys, don't just blindly follow what I do. Maybe the settings that I used won't work for your footage, or maybe you just don't like them. And that's fine, it's all good. Experiment, play around with it, and practice, 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 practice. Thank you so much for watching, and see you in the next one.